There they go. I just had these uh, couple of trees out front removed. This tree that was here was just dead. It was just sticks. It's been dead for a long time. Every time we have a storm, it drops big branches. This one over here was also dying and the branch was going way over that way. Now it did provide a little bit of shade for this little section of the house. The only, you know, the thing is, look where the sun is, right? It, it's so windy out here today, I'm so sorry. But it, it just shaded this, this uh, closet and this bathroom a little bit. But the main problem is it just made a mess. It dropped this mess all day long and the wind is blowing in the direction that I'm walking, which is, I guess this is Northeast, I suppose. Um, and so what would happen is these leaves, see these leaves, would go into my pool. And it's really dirty now from all the, there's a bag in there, I need to clean that out. But every day we have to clean the pool. I have the red pool for those of you watching for the first time. And if I didn't have that tree there, I wouldn't have to clean, constantly clean the roof. I have to send my dude up there all the time and he sweeps the roof and he sweeps this area up here. And, and you can see just for years and years and years, whatever the, this is a willow tree or whatever kind of tree, but just for decades, the tree is probably as old as the house. So it's probably 40, 50 years old. And I know people are gonna be mad at me for cutting down the tree, but the tree was not, it was in bad condition. Oh my God, it's so windy out here. I can't talk. This is why I didn't want to film. I wasn't recording because there was so much noise with the chainsaw and, and the wood chipper, I wouldn't have been able to talk. This is some beautiful wood. They're coming back to get this wood. Uh, I wish I could use it for firewood, but uh, I don't have a way to split it. It'd be too much work. Uh, did me a good job. Okay, what did it cost to get these trees taken down? Did me a good, uh, a good deal, which I feel like is a good deal. He charged me $3,200. So $3,200 to remove both trees completely. And that was a big tree. I mean, it was a huge 50 year old tree. I mean, this property was built in 1965. So that tree was either naturally here or they planted it. But I don't think it was naturally here. That's not a natural tree that would be here. None of these trees are really natural. These, these whatever these trees are, they're trash and these cypress trees. Are really cool. I don't want any of that kind of greenery here. I want desert plants. We're gonna redo all of this. I'm gonna work with my buddy who runs Dirt to Dreams Landscaping. He did that White Rocks area. I wanna cut off this little peninsula here so, so it has more space. We're gonna remove all these rocks and um, we're gonna get rid of those trees eventually. This is all gonna be cleaned out and it's gonna be palm tree, palm tree, palm tree, palm tree, palm tree. We're gonna put at least four or five palm trees along this wall. And then just like these statues here, we're gonna have like statue, palm tree statue but and then, you know we're gonna have various desert plants barrel cactuses all kind nice lighting that shines up on the wall only i'll be able to see this right but it's it'll look nice when i come out of my front door it's gonna look beautiful and it's a lot of work to upkeep all this i've talked about this before but this was a big pile of bushes that was here and um we took them out and i want to get a pool company to come we're going to dig this up a bit and we're basically going to concrete this. We're going to make this a little two foot wall around here and we're going to make this into like a swimming pool basically, but it'll be tiled. It'll, it'll be a fountain and in the center, there'll be a large bowl that'll just bowl over and then a statue in the middle of it because it's so windy here in Vegas all the time. If it was a tall fountain like this the size of this lamp, it would just spill everywhere, right? So uh, we're going to have a nice lighted, imagine like a big bowl the size of this ring that's only about, you know, a foot off of the water and the water's just trickling over. And then we'll have a statue in the middle with light shining up on the statue. The statue that I want to put there is uh, either Venus de Milo or most likely I'll put, I want the victory of Samothrace, the, the god of Nike, the winged god of Nike, the headless woman. Uh, we've got the children of Zeus here at the front. The Blues Brothers are going to go away. They're going away. The, the Blues Brothers car went away. And those guys, I put those guys here when I first moved here just because I thought it was funny. And they kind of caused problems for a while. We're gonna be doing a lot to the house. We're gonna repaint the entire house white. We're gonna take off the shutters. I wanna kind of uncountryfy. I don't want the countryness. I don't want it to be Hoovy's barn. I want it to be Video Bob's fortress of solid dudes. You know what I'm saying? We're gonna get rid of the barn doors and the hay baler and stuff. We're gonna get rid of these things. This is all gonna be white, blinding white. However, everything that you see now that's white will then be black. So we're gonna paint the window trim black. I'm gonna probably get red doors. Of course I am. Uh, this is all going to be white. Um, we're going to paint, of course, we're going to paint all of the sidewalks, 
and the thing here red this will be red red isn't that uncommon to be used for uh this patio paint you know they, they you can buy it in this darker crimson red so this will all be red you can see where the water from the sprinklers used to run through here and uh this is all going to be cleaned acid ash and it's going to be all done in red uh the curbs i will keep white or i may even paint them yellow or just keep them white white is a good color to have but they get dirty um and it's just going to be beautiful i want to have uh it's going to be nice we're going to change out these sconces i've got some really cool sconces that are going to go here and i really wish i could change out these old pillars i'd love to put roman fluted pillars there um gonna get rid of the weather vane up there the chicken on the stoop i don't really want that thing there uh and i may redecorate this a little bit just so you know if it was up to me i'd make this look like ramparts i would facade this like a castle wall <laughs> if i had my druthers so those are some plans uh for that this whole wall is going to be painted gray we're going to paint this gray um, all the way down so it matches the concrete same color this whole house is going to be all done and uh, we'll leave this metal work white but this fencing has to be completely redone it's we're just going to rip it out and start over because it's in pretty bad condition there's the old popo car i've been driving that around doing my gypsy hunting um, i want to repaint this building white as well the statue doesn't really go here but that's where it ended up because it's heavy I want to do some work back here. We have a nice lush green lawn back here. It's doing really well. I'd like to do something with this gazebo. But here's the plans for the backyard. And there's a tiki bar. We're getting the tiki bar ready for the summer. We're getting it cleaned up. So here's the plans, right? Here's, here's what I want. All right, all of these trees are going to go away, okay? Because this one's dead. That one's dead. They're all going to die. One of them fell down in the storm, as you know. So all this fencing, all these trees, and everything behind there is gone. Right here, I want to have a huge waterfall, right? So imagine this being big rocks. Get this out of here. Trash. Okay. So imagine this being big rocks that overflow all the way into the pool so that there's a pipe that goes down into the water, sucking the water out and regenerating in the waterfall here. And then that butts up against a block wall that will be high enough that it blocks all these windows. So from standing over there by my door, I'm gonna just tell the guy, keep putting bricks till I can't see these people's windows so they can't see me. However tall that's gotta be, 10, 12 feet, whatever the city lets me do. And then we're gonna put a huge foundation, a big two, three foot square, brick foundation is going to go all the way around and that wall is going to continue all the way around until it gets to where the building is and then it will drop down to about three feet just to be, just to be a wall around the edge there and my other idea that i wanted to do i'm trying to decide if i really want to do this but we were going to unvegetate this all right all these palm trees are weeds that just started growing here these are all coming out everything here is coming out and then I wanted to make this into a basin, maybe a six inch or tw uh, 12 inch, you know, basin that goes all the way around that we can fill with rocks and lights and water. And the idea is that um, either part of the waterfall flows into this and it just keeps fresh water in, or another idea was to make more waterfall out of the wall. Or maybe I'll just, uh, you know, the other idea is to, to put some desert plants along there like cactus and stuff. The thing is, they do need some kind of water. Now, I do have sprinklers here, and those sprinklers are going to spray in that direction. So I may put desert plants there, but they have to be really shallow-rooted plants that aren't going to grow. Because, see, the problem with this tree is this, this tree's got a big base. It's got to go. It's going to destroy everything. It's going to grow and lean over. It's, it's a problem. That tree's got to go. That one's got to go. And when I moved here, none of these palm trees were here. None of them. Like, this one's new. These things are weed, these Mexican palms. These are weeds. They just pop up and grow. This is a huge rose bush. Oh my gosh, it's so windy. Look at this. This sprinkler head is falling. I gotta fix that. I need Hippie to come fix that. So we need to, we, we, you know, there's a lot that's gonna happen. This is gonna probably cost, I don't know, 20 grand. So, but I'm gonna make this into a huge oasis. I may do something where I may create some kind of a 
mesh or a doorway or a glass or something to partially cut this off. I don't know, because we have this hot tub and when we come out and want to get in the hot tub, like it's just, you know, like, like if I had the, uh, the ability to do it, I would love to have some kind of just giant cover put over this whole area. So it's kind of indoors, but not really, you know, I don't know. I'm up in the air about it, but we haven't obviously been in the pool this year. It's still very cold. Let's see what the temperature is. It's a beautiful day. It's just windy. So the temperature of the pool right now, 67. And oh my gosh, it's filthy. Look at all the stuff in the bottom of the pool. That's from the, the wind and them doing the trees and the dust. So we're going to clean the pool soon. It is so windy today. Good God. I'm trying to clean up the tiki bar. It's just filthy. Um, it's just filthy. We need to clean it. So anyway, there's a look at projects we're doing at the house, at the, uh, the Vegas mansion. You know, I wish these apartments weren't here. They didn't build these until 1990. This house used to exist all by itself and from 1965 until 1990, and then they built all these apartments. And, you know, imagine that this farm was in the middle of nowhere and then progress built all around it. Sort of like Doc Brown's garage with a Burger King next door. It's just, but you know, I had to have this property. I searched for about five years before I moved to Vegas, trying to find something like this. This is just something that's really rare. Sorry about all the noise on the microphone. I'll try to reduce it. But where else could you find a, a place like this? And I'm not, you know, it's public knowledge. I paid 700 for the house. And, um, you know, I have my own well. I belong to a paving company called Sunrise Paving. Uh, Glenn and Jill Warren, who ran Sunrise Paving. And for some reason, I still get their mail three years later. They refuse to stop using my address. I keep getting processed servers and mail sent to me. I get mail from you sent to them all the time. And um, so, and I've, I've reached out to them and they just refuse to stop sending mail here. I don't know. Or having mail sent here. They're hiding from somebody. Got the Lamborghini out here and it's just cut. Look at it. It's covered in dust because of the wind. You can't own anything out here in the desert without it looking like this. Even the reason I don't put a cover on it is because the cover would damage it worse. Because what happens is the sun or the wind rattles the cover. The, the, the dust gets under the cover. It would look like this even if there was a cover on it. The important thing is that it's out of the sun. So the dust doesn't hurt it as long as the dust isn't moving. But if you put a cover on the car, sand gets under there. Now it's sand, sanding the car. And also it hurt the wing. And I'm trying to sell some of my cars so I can put it inside. I, I need to be able to put it in here, but this is full stuff. I got too many cars. And the other cars that are in the other warehouse are convertibles, so I can't put them outside. You know, the Ferrari, I think I'm gonna sell the Testarossa. I never drive it. I'm gonna sell that Cadillac XLR way over there. I just sold the Bluesmobile. But the, the Testarossa replica, which is a Trans Am, that's gonna go. Eric has his boat over here. And like, look at that car cover. We, we keep replacing the car cover and it just goes to shit. It turns into Swiss cheese. We just finished this door. Um, I take most of you have seen the inside of the shop, which is getting to be overflowed. I got too much stuff in here. You know, I got the Knight Rider up there. I got my time machine here with stuff sitting on the hood. We got the Corniche project and the Scarface convertible. This car is still for sale. This car was built on our television show Screen Machines in 2014. It was our first episode. It's been recently completely redone. It spent a month over at my buddy Mike's house where he replaced the original drum brakes with disc brakes, which means we put a new booster on there, new all the hardware that makes disc brakes. This engine's been completely gone through plugs, wires, coil, hoses, radiator, electric fans, new batteries, additional battery put in the back. Thing starts up and runs like a champ, drives great. Replaced all the hydraulics for the, the, the entire hydraulic top, the hoses, batteries, relays, rewired the doors, new window motors, four new window motors. So all the windows go up and down, the top goes up and down. The AC or heat doesn't work. There's no blower motor. 
uh, the windshield wipers don't work, but everything else works. And the thing is, I, I didn't concentrate on those things because if you're gonna take the car out, it's just gonna be a convertible, right? You take the top down, you put the windows down, and you drive it like that. But I can't park this car outside the way it is. I just can't because it just doesn't seal up. And so I need to keep it in here. This car also, this is a project we're working on and I need to get back to work on it. And um, yeah, I can't have this outside and we're working on it, right? So I can't put the Lamborghini in here. I suppose I could put the Knight Rider outside because it seals up nice, but that's a car that's T-tops and black and I really don't want that car outside. I, I just don't. And I'm not putting the DeLorean outside. That's not gonna happen. So the Lamborghini's outside. Now I could bring the Lamborghini in here. It would fit. Now that we have the ramp, we just got the ramp put in. I could move the Lamborghini either in there or the DeLorean in here. They're both very small cars, but you can see how I'm using the space right now. This is my workshop and it's very messy. You can see that I'm in here working in the workshop. And the goal was that this table was on wheels and you can scoot it out of the way and you can pull a car in here and you can work climate controlled in here. But what a mess, right? So. So these are things that, but look at this shop, right? This shop is amazing. How many people would love to have a shop like that? That have, you know, this, this climate controlled room. Now the four post lift I put in, the crane was already here. The pit was already here. And then the whole thing is plumbed with air and water, right? I have a pit, you know, there's water over there. There's air compressor that runs through here and in that other room that came with the property. Unbelievable, right? Look at this thing. How great is that? Got a little pisser out here. Nice little bathroom. It's not much, but at least you don't have to go in the house or pee in a bottle or something. Um, and then I have this whole other building, which is a house all into itself. I mean, in all honesty, if I were to buy an acre of land in Las Vegas, this is over an acre. It's like one and a quarter acre. If I bought an acre of land with this building here, this house, this two bedroom house, I would have spent, okay, just an acre of land in Las Vegas. An acre of land in this neighborhood would cost you, I'm talking about dirt with no development on it, no services, you're talking $300,000 for an acre of land. Okay. So an acre of land with this house on it, with a two bedroom, you know, 2,000, 2,500 square foot, whatever it is, with that house on it, that's easily a $400,000 or more. So 700 for the whole thing, deal. It's kind of a mess in here. I, I, you're gonna hear me say that a lot. So we're doing a lot of cleaning up, doing a lot of work in here. This is my jam room, I'm selling all of these pinball machines. I was recently featured on the TV show Pawn Stars. I don't think it's aired yet. We did an episode with the Scarface car. We also did one with Rick and the pinball machine. So I'm selling all of these. You have the Ghostbusters, Elvira, and the Back to the Future, which is autographed by the entire cast. Tom Wilson, Biff, Christopher Lloyd, um, Michael J. Fox, and Kevin Pike, the special effects coordinator. I have them set up on a remote. Let me. So uh, this is our jam room. You've probably seen us online. This is where we rehearse my Judas Priest cover band called Turbo Lover. And uh, that's where we rehearse. Let's see, I think it's... No, wait, hold on. Yep. So I have this remote hooked up so I can turn them on easy. And uh, what do I want for them? Well, I've done some research. This Ghostbuster is a premium with the topper. I'd say it's worth minimally at least $12,000. I mean, you, the topper alone goes for like three grand. This is the premium model signed by Ernie Hudson. Uh, with like hardly any plays on it. Got it directly from Stern in the box. This Elvira, it's signed by Elvira. It's been completely shopped out with all silicone rubber and LEDs. I'd like to get $5,000 for it. The Back to the Future, also shopped out, all silicone, LEDs. I'd like to get 8,000 for this game. Find another one. Find one that's been signed. And this has been clear coded like four times, so it's like this won't rub off. Okay. But anyway, that's what I want for the games. They all work great. And, um, you know, they're, it's great. See if I can hit the, I did it. Look at that. I'm 
You're playing with one hand. Okay. And then the Elvira. This is my favorite game of all time. But I've, I've got to clear this building out. Really? Okay, then you got Ghostbusters. Oh, I turned the sound off on this game. playing itself. Look at that. There it goes. Whoa, what happened? <laughs> Whoa, this game is hard. So if you're interested in any of these games, uh, send me a direct message. Um, and uh, they're located in Las Vegas. Come and get them pay cash. I got to clear out. Let me turn this off here. Hold on. It's, it's making too much noise. It's like, give me a break. That's, that's why I did the remote because like it solves all those problems. There you go. I got so much stuff I gotta get rid of. I gotta I gotta clear out these. I have just rooms and rooms of stuff like this. And I, I gotta e start eBay and all this crap, you know? I've got clothes, I've got signed stuff. This is all back to the future stuff, like you know, signed uh, box sets, and I was in this movie, Answer the Call. I'm in the movie. Go watch it. You'll see me in the movie. The movie sucks. Um, like I said, I got to eBay all this stuff. I've got all this autographed stuff. I've got clothes. I've got equipment, musical equipment. I've got, ton you know, I used to work for Vinnie Paul from Pantera. This is all Pantera stuff. I got Pantera stuff you wouldn't believe that was used in the band Pantera, you know? I just have all this stuff. And um, I, I'm trying to go through it, like these symbols. Vinny played those symbols at the last show, 2001 Pantera. I don't have any proof of it. You just have to take my word for it. But these are all Vinny Paul stuff he took right out of the Pantera Road case and handed to me when I was setting up my drum set several years ago. And um, you can just believe me or don't. And that's the reason I haven't really sold them because like, how do I prove it? You just have to take my word for it. Like everything you see here, this is um, not everything, but like for instance, this cymbal pedal that was Vinny's pedal right off of his drum kit. You know, I have things that um, were Vinny's. For instance, I'll give you an example. Like these up here, those are his prototype D drum pedals that was made. Look, he put pearl bead ears on them. This was funny. And those were the prototypes that he used until the productions were ready. And he uh, gave them to me. You know, I, that's one of his true stick cases. I have tons of his stuff because, you know, I worked for him for 15 years. And, so, you know, so all the Pearl stuff I have is directly from him. Uh, this is our mixer system. I'm keeping all this. This is how, what I, my teleprompter I use for re remembering my lyrics. My line six system. Um, Catch you guys later.